life is so precious. All our lives differ in many ways. Not on an accident, but on purpose. No matter rich or poor, we should all end in paradise. There are a group of individuals that I still consider myself a part of that receives the stigma and nothing's being done about it. The latest trend could be the most tasteless. Selfies with homeless people. Teens turning the homeless into props to share online. Since when is it okay for humans to become scenery? What if this new trend led to bullying of the most vulnerable? A general assumption when you're reporting on poor communities that unemployment summit we we don't want to change. We don't want jobs. We're actually um, lazy in a lot of cases. We're also always in need of help. We can't do anything for ourselves. And the commentary reflects this in the way it speaks about a life in Marsh Farm, for example. People complain. They say uh, people don't bother looking for a job. Some people do. I was out there every day looking for a job. For 13 months I was signing on. And it's... It's such a ne negative impact on Marsh Farm that makes it worse. Those who oppose that there is a stigma towards those in poverty will say things like this. Coming from Derek Thompson's Your Brain on Poverty. Why poor people seem to make bad decisions. Why I make terrible decisions. A comment published on Gonker's Kinja platform by a person in poverty. That's very cruel to say a whole group of individuals make bad decisions because they're poor. Rich or poor, we all make bad decisions. That's human nature. For me, it starts with Dorothea Lange, capturing one of the most famous pictures we know of today during the Great Depression, called The Migrant Mother. She spoke to the world with her camera, capturing the conditions those in poverty were facing, and it only seemed to get worse. My name is James Ziliak. I'm a professor of economics and director of the Center for Poverty Research at the University of Kentucky. So uh, as a professor, I conduct research um, and my research focuses on poverty and inequality in the U.S. Uh, I also teach at both the graduate and undergraduate level. And as a director of a, actually director of two centers, uh, I have some administrative uh, aspects of my job as well. Yeah, I uh, um, went to public schools um, for the first six years and then changed to a Catholic school um, later on and through high school and then went to Purdue University as an undergraduate and then Indiana uh, for my PhD and um, finished in 1993 with a PhD and have been in academia since then. I think it depends on kind of the source and the time. Um, the source can vary um, with kind of a more sympathetic lens. Um, oftentimes, in the sympathetic lens, the, the poor are viewed more as kind of a, a victim of um, structural aspects of the economy and society kind of beyond their control. Um, there are other um, uh, media outlets that will kind of portray them in a more negative light where um, it's more of a personal failure, okay, as opposed to, you know, social and structural impediments to success. So it really depends on the lens that the people are looking at. And I think it also depends on the time frame as well that, um, if the economy overall is in a kind of a recessionary period, I think there's wider sympathy um, for, for low-income people. But during kind of heydays of a boom period, you know, if people are not really making it, I think people are a little bit more suspicious of, of low income. It's interesting, um, natural disasters tend to uh, uh, elucidate a lot more sympathy. So. After Hurricane Katrina, for example, in 2005, there was uh, a sudden surge of interest in, in uh, 
poverty in Appalachia. And so our center was contacted by producers from Oprah Winfrey's show, from Anderson Cooper's show on CNN. Uh, I did uh, an interview with Reverend Jesse Jackson on a satellite TV station, you know. So, so it was interesting, you know, Katrina hit, you know, in, in New Orleans, but it was like this awakening that, wow, there's poverty in America that, that I think people had forgotten. And so that lens then turned towards towards Appalachia. Stigma is generally kind of a social um, caricature um, of either an individual or traits of an individual, and um, and it becomes a uh, caricature that can be adopted by the person for whom it's being described, and so that the person themselves feels this social um, isolation, right, uh, associated with that stigma. Well, if I felt as though <laughs> I could do something meaningful, I might try to diffuse the situation as best as possible, um, and, and if it looks beyond my control, then obviously I would, I would call for the authorities for, for some assistance. Did you do that? No, I, I have not, where I've, where I've, you know, kind of witnessed um, kind of verbal or physical abuse of, of uh, homeless or, or, or poor individuals in general. No, I haven't. Bystanders reach the boiling point All right, we're going to beat up a bum here. It's a shocking phenomenon, a sadistic pastime for all too many teenagers, bum bashing, brutally attacking the homeless. Caught on surveillance video, they beat them with bats, taser them, and that ball of fire is a homeless person being torched. Where'd you hit These teens in Canada actually videotaped their assaults, this time using a steel bar to the man's face. Oh, oh man, that would have hurt. And when they're done, they urinate on their victim. <laughs> Hundreds of videos of homeless people being assaulted are all over the internet, fueling even more attacks. But they still trust you, they still fuck with you Anything you do, anything you do Everything's for you, drama is for you Take that L you lose, take that L you lose No need to pretend, she got a little bit of drama with her friends She got a little bit of drama with her friends She got a little bit of drama with her friends She got a little bit of